Although often taken for granted, our sense of touch is fundamental for survival. Touch is critical for social bonding, successful child rearing, and proper cognitive development. As a densely innervated organ, our skin provides both an interface through which we sense the world around us and a protective barrier. Epithelial cells, which make up the skin's outermost layers, participate in both of these critical functions. Specialized epithelial cells initiate a variety of sensory modalities, including hearing and balance, taste, gut sensations, and gentle touch. These epithelial cells are innervated by peripheral neurons that convey information to the central nervous system. A fundamental question is, how do these epithelial cells communicate with sensory afferents to shape information coding? We tackled this question by focusing on Merkel cell neurite complexes. These gentle touch receptors encode steady pressure as well as spatial features such as curvature and edges. Merkel cells cluster in fingertips, whisker follicles, and touch domes, which are regions of hairy skin analyzed in this study. Since the 1970s, Neuroscientists have debated whether and how Merkel cells excite action potentials in sensory neurons. A long-standing model is that Merkel cells form chemical synapses with the terminals of myelinated A-beta afferents. To systematically test this hypothesis, we turn to the pioneering work of Dale and Lowy, who are widely credited with the discovery of chemical synaptic transmission. Based on their work, John Eccles proposed five fundamental criteria for a bona fide chemical synapse. The first is that the biosynthetic machinery for chemical transmission must be present in the presynaptic cell. To test this criterion, we used RNA-seq to compare the transcriptomes of purified Merkel cells and keratinocytes, which form the skin's barrier. This transcriptome-wide analysis shows that Merkel cells express all of the presynaptic and biosynthetic machinery required for regulated release of neurotransmitters. We were intrigued to find that Merkel cells are highly enriched in tyrosine hydroxylase, the rate-limiting enzyme for catecholamine biosynthesis. These data fulfill Eccles' first criterion and suggest that Merkel cells might employ dopamine, epinephrine, or norepinephrine as a neurotransmitter. Eccles' second criterion is that neurotransmitter must be present in the presynaptic cell. To test this criterion, we used a fluorescent neurotransmitter analog that is taken up into catecholamine-containing vesicles. We found that Merkel cells load this catecholamine analog into vesicle-like puncta. This brings us to Eccles' third criterion. Neurotransmitter must be released when the presynaptic cell is stimulated. Live cell imaging showed that fluorescent puncta rapidly destained when Merkel cells were stimulated by either depolarization or touch. These results fulfill criteria number three. To determine whether vesicle release is required for Merkel cells to convey tactile information to sensory afferents, we synaptically silenced vesicle release from Merkel cells and used electrophysiology to record from Merkel cell afferents. In wild-type mice, Merkel cell afferents sustain robust action potential firing throughout touch stimulation. By contrast, Merkel cell afferents from synaptically silenced mice had reduced firing at the onset of touch and failed to maintain firing for more than a couple seconds. Turning to the postsynaptic side, we tested Eccles' fourth criterion, that neurotransmitter must directly activate the postsynaptic neuron. Merkel cell afferents were excited by norepinephrine, but not serotonin or dopamine. What's more, mechanoreceptors that didn't innervate Merkel cells weren't excited by norepinephrine. These results fulfill criterion four and demonstrate that Merkel cell afferents are selectively excited by norepinephrine. Finally, we used pharmacology and genetics to test Eccles' fifth criterion, that antagonism of postsynaptic receptors must suppress the action of the postsynaptic neuron. We block the beta-2 adrenergic receptor by applying an antagonist or by selectively deleting the gene in peripheral neurons. In both cases, touch-evoked firing in Merkel cell afferents was dramatically reduced. Thus, neuronal beta-2 adrenergic receptors are required for Merkel cell neurite complexes to properly encode touch. Together, these results have led us to the following model of the Merkel cell neurite complex as an adrenergic chemical synapse. Touch stimuli activate Merkel cells, which results in release of norepinephrine from vesicles. Norepinephrine then binds to beta-2 adrenergic receptors in sensory neurons, leading to action potential generation. These mechanistic studies further our fundamental understanding of touch sensation in mammals. We hope that these results might one day fuel the development of new therapeutics for tactile allodynia or other sensory disorders.